first thing we're going to look at is the enclosure. This was, of course, 3D printed on my old Dremel printer. It's three, four years now, but it still works fine. I would recommend getting a 3D printer for uh, stuff like this because for one-off projects and personal projects, they work great. Uh, of course, I wouldn't sell this. I mean, you see all the lines, but I recommend you to get one if you're into making stuff. Now, to attach the enclosure to my slider, I used uh, one of those magic arm that they call it. This one is fairly short, but they have uh, bigger ones available. If you just tighten the knob and it stays in place. You can get these on Amazon. They're very cheap and uh, a great way to attach stuff to other stuff. So there you go. Link in the description as well. Next thing is power. I didn't want to have to plug in to an outlet every time I wanted to use a slider. So I'm using this battery plate that accepts NPF batteries. NPF batteries are cheap and are used in many things like LED lights. So I already had some lying around. Again, you can find a link below for this battery plate. It's pretty cheap. I think it's about 16 bucks uh, Canadian. Now to connect the output of the battery plate, I've just used a standard uh, little 2.1 to 5.5 millimeter outlet that goes in the box right here. So I can connect the output to the box. And there you go, that's for power. All right, so now let's have a look at the uh, components inside the box itself. First, we have the Arduino Nano. I chose this since it's basically like an Arduino Uno, but it's much smaller. Next to it, we have the Easy Driver to control the stepper motor. I've used these before. They're easy to program. I've done many tutorials on them. You can check them out here in the corner if you want to. All right, real quick to put everything together, uh, this little board here that you see, it's called a solderable PC breadboard. And the way these are made, the connections on the back side here, as you can see, actually mimic a regular breadboard. They even have one that's as big as this guy. So what's cool about this is that you do your prototyping with wires and stuff and you make it work here. And then you could just move the components from the breadboard directly on these boards and just solder the connections right there. So these are really cool. I really keep a lot of those on hand in the shop when I do projects. And I'll leave a link in the description for these guys as well. Next, we have the LCD screen. The one I used was the Nexion 3.2 inches. I've used those in the past and they are great for application like this. They communicate using a serial connection, so they only need two pins on the Arduino. Now, we will look at creating the graphics and the Arduino code in the next video. Now, I just wanted to talk about how I'm powering all this stuff. So you have a Nano, you have the Easy Driver, you have the Nexion screen right here. All these guys take different inputs uh, in voltage. So if we take the easy driver, that one can take from 6 volts to 30 volts. The Nano can be powered directly, and that would take from 7 to 12 volts. The Nexteon, on the other hand, can only take 5 volt maximum. So if you look at the battery, it says 7.2 volts. So the way I made the connections here, I'm going to put a diagram on the screen right there. Let me move this. The way I'm doing this is that the battery is directly connected to the easy driver and the nano and the next Xeon takes its power from the 5 volt regulated output of the nano and the nano can provide up to 500 milliamps through that and the next Xeon only requires 85 milliamps at full brightness so there's no problem powering the next Xeon from the nano and that's the way the power is being distributed and using only one battery. If you want more information on that, check out my website. I have a full tutorial on this. You can check the diagrams that are just put on the screen and an explanation of all the connections that you see here. And of course, last but not least is the motor itself. It's uh, I'm using a run the mill NEMA 17 four wire stepper motor. Uh, you can find these easily on Amazon. They're basically everywhere. So these are not hard to find and they're pretty cheap too. I got this one, I think for 14 bucks uh, Canadian. So there you go, that's all the part for this project. The only other thing is the camera that I use on this slider, and that's the Osmo Pocket. Yeah, I know, it's kind of weird, but this little camera enables me to do slider tracking shots since it has active tracking with the gimbal, and I can do these shots without needing to move the camera left or right while the slider is moving. You can select the object on a smartphone, and the Osmo Pocket will use the gimbal to keep it in the shot while the slider is moving. Uh, it works pretty well if you don't move too fast. So the quality is great and I like it a lot. So that'll do it for today. Hope to see you guys in the next one, which will be the conclusion of this project with the Arduino code and the programming of the LCD screen. So as always, my name is Ivan and I hope to see you guys real soon. Take care.